Hey y'all, welcome back. Today we're checking out what are some Brit things, no, what what are some things Brits do that Americans think are strange? First one is, I'll start apologizing for everything. Man, it's a little strange. Americans do that too. Learn about Slind. What is Slind? Never heard of it. Let's love everybody. Oh, okay. Sure. Inclusive of many kinds of bodies. Birth control should fit women like you. I don't think I'm their target audience. Yeah. I don't I don't know if we have that here. Alright, learn about Slind. Okay. That's number two. Go to hospital without taking a credit card. <laughs> Obviously, we still take our credit cards so that we can pay for a ludicrously overpriced chocolate bar <laughs> at the vending machine. And parking again now. Oh, I hate paying for parking. I hate for... Oh, gosh. I hate paying for parking. The hospital I attend for my chemo sessions actually has free park. Oh, good for you. Good for you. I think it's been free parking for cancer patients. Okay, we're getting too deep. Here's the next one. Pantomimes at Christmas. It's fun explaining it to any non-Brit, as it seems to be uniquely British and utterly bizarre when you get down to it. Yeah, I've heard about these pantomimes. The only equivalent we have in America, I think, are like the Rocky Horror Picture Show. They'll do a midnight showing. People come dressed up as the characters and they throw stuff at the screen and they scream out along with the movie. But it's a movie, it's not a play. In America, if you're screaming during a play, you're asked to leave. What's the next one? What's the next one? Oh, this one. Look at this. Okay. Wow, this has a lot of... This is controversial, I guess. Pantomimes at Christmas and utterly bizarre. Ooh, yes it is. Oh, no it isn't. Oh, yes it is. Oh, no it isn't. Oh, yes it is. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, yes, it bloody is. Oh, I could crush a grape. <laughs> now, this is British. I bet this is a conversation that happens at the pubs every day. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Bloody it is. Oh, I could crush a grape. Right, next. He's behind you. <laughs> Oh no, he isn't. He's in Balmoral Castle sweating buckets. I don't know what that is. I thought he couldn't sweat. This is bizarre. This is strange. Okay. Further, I'd say Christmas being a proper holiday holiday in the UK, it's more like US Thanksgiving in terms of almost everyone celebrating it and sitting around eating food with their families. Yeah, I love Thanksgiving, y'all. It's Christmas without the gifts. You don't have all that gift pressure? What did I get this person? How much money am I spending? Did I get them a level of gift that they're giving me, probably? Thanksgiving? Just get together and eat? Be thankful? Watch football? It's great. I think the UK should adopt Thanksgiving. How about you make Thanksgiving about the Beatles? You're just thankful for the Beatles. Everyone can get behind that. I bet. Well, not everybody. Some people hate the Beatles. Because they're so mainstream, it's cool to hate the Beatles. In the US, things are still open on Christmas Day, like cinemas, supermarkets. Yep, they are. They shouldn't be, because those people who work there have to work on Christmas. That's not cool. A lot of US companies also give the next day off after Thanksgiving for a longer holiday, a bit like Boxing Day. Some of them do. If you're in retail, they don't, because they got that Black Friday sale. And you gotta be there at like 5 a.m. to open the doors for all these crowds of people trying to kill each other. And you end up, you know, you're working the cash register, but you find yourself, now you're working security. Now you're a bodyguard. It's not cool. I'd add to this, extending the Christmas break into New Year's as well. Yeah! I have American clients and they're always envious when I explain that I'll be taking two days off and that actually I won't be around properly for another 11 days. Yeah. Oh man. That week between Christmas and New Year's is the best week of the year, I think. There's nothing going on. And even if you do have to work, it's kind of like, who really cares, right? Crimbo Limbo. That's what it's called. I'm into that. I live near three U.S. air bases in the U.K., and I absolutely love trying to explain to Americans what a panto is just to see their faces. 
It's a cross between RuPaul's Drag Race and CBBS. <laughs> What's CBBS? Oh, oh, Bluey, I recognize that. Not associating guns with freedom. <sighs> yeah, let's not dig into that. To take this further, it's because we're... Okay, we're going to take it further. <laughs> I just said let's not take it further. The next thing says let's take it further. Okay, it's because we're talking about different kinds of freedom. In the U.S., it's a selfish freedom. The freedom to do whatever I want, regardless of the harm to other people, society, or the environment. Whereas in more social democratic countries, freedom is a freedom from things. Freedom from poverty, health problems, discrimination, oppression. Yeah. 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 Not much I can add to that without crying. So let's just move on. I think in the UK, we do have a hint of the selfish freedom, but also believe in things like universal health care. Yeah. Yeah, the health care thing. Our politicians have really messed things up. You know, you got to They're creating enemies to make people fearful. Free health care for everyone would destroy the country. Rah! You know? No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. It would save your grandma. Save your grandma. Greeting people with, all right? <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Why are you showing consideration to a stranger? What are you, British? I'm Northern, so it's more like, all right. All right. All right. All right. All right. You're, you're right. <laughs> you're right, Matt. <laughs> Definitely this. The times have been stateside and used all right. Force of habit. They've taken it as being quite standoffish. All right? Yeah, I'm fine. Why wouldn't I be? Yeah, that's kind of, yeah. That's kind of, that's kind of my response. How about the Yorkshire greeting? Yorkshire, excuse me. Now then. Seems perfectly normal to me, but the uninitiated literally starting a conversation with a two-word self-contradiction now then now then yeah that's a strange one I used to work with a guy called smithy he was about 60 full-on yorkshire had the words mild and bitter tattooed <laughs> above his nipples <laughs> and bizarrely worked in hr he'd answer his desk phone by saying now then, cock, what's the want? That's a good HR person. I want to party with this HR person. I heard that Americans think beans on toast is a weird combination. Yeah, it is a little weird, but I've done it and it's good. I think when I was a child and could not cook, I think I put, I think I made a baked bean sandwich. I've always thought peanut butter and jelly was strange, but I've never tried it. So what do I know? You've never tried peanut butter and jelly? It's wonderful. For years, I thought it was the weirdest concept. I couldn't even figure out how they do it. Then I found out when they say jelly, they mean jam. Oh, right, 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 right. So yeah, recently reacted to a video about this word difference. And jelly in the UK is like jello here. Or gelatin would be the broader term, I guess. That would be strange. Jello and peanut butter. That would be gross. Jam, preserves, it's all good. The UK eat more baked beans than the rest of the world combined. <laughs> Do they? I play a significant part of that and proud of it. <laughs> it's good. Having a washing machine in the kitchen. Yeah, that's strange. I've seen that. I've, I've seen that. Call each other <laughs> often without malice. <laughs> that is strange. <laughs> Y'all. If you call a woman a c in the United States, it's over. Talk at a reasonable volume. <laughs> hey now. Hey. Listen to my voice. This is me. Complain at a national pastime. Complain as a national pastime. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Edit. C is still a swear word and can get you in serious trouble. It all depends on context. Americans, please don't come to the UK thinking you can call everyone a gun. I would also like to add, you may find our sandwiches strange. They can be a horribly barren affair. Yours are much better. Oh, well, thank you. I don't know, a bacon buddy sounds really good. Okay, let's get past the laundry stuff. Walking more than 20 minutes. Huh? I'll walk three or four miles a day, so... That's like an hour. Maybe I'm an outstander. We have a reputation with the Americans that our teeth are bad. 
I must say, living in Manchester, I do actually see a lot of people with wonky teeth. Americans stereotypically have these bizarre glowing white monstrosities. <laughs> to me, they look awful, and our natural misshaped yellow stained teeth look fine. The UK, despite the current adverts you see, still isn't fully sold on the need for shiny, fake, white-looking teeth if they're healthy. You want to give your kids a leg up, you know? Nice smile? It's good. One of the things I found when in America was that they think our food is bad. I don't know if this is an 80s, 90s relic, but I'm way more impressed with restaurants in the UK. The really cheap food is much better in the US, but anything else I've found to be better in the UK. Alright, I don't know. There's too much choices of bad, delicious, unhealthy food. You have to actively keep yourself from it. It's always there. I could pick up my phone and order some of the most indulgent food in the world, and it'll be at my door in 20 minutes. That's bad. That's bad. I'm thinking about food right now. Y'all, there's this place called Abuelitas Berria. They make these Berria tacos. It's like beef stew tacos. There's the consomme. Oh, it's something special. Anyway, back, back to this. Drink hot tea with milk in it. Work for an international company and been to their HQ in Midwestern US. It was winter. Me and my British colleagues had asked their office supervisor if they could please lay on some tea for us. It was a pitcher of iced tea. <laughs> sweet enough to give you diabetes with just one sip. Y'all, sweet tea is God. Visited Southern California, Woot Woot, Palo Alto to be precise. That's in Northern California. Thank you. Had some downtime before my meetings and decided to wander about on foot to explore the famous Silicon Valley. It was pretty underwhelming to be honest and quite spread apart. I had a rucksack with water in it. I had really strange looks from people in cars driving past. I mentioned this to my US colleagues who laughed at me saying that I must have thought I was a homeless person <laughs> as nobody really walks anywhere. Hmm. Oh, edit. Yes, I know Palo Alto is not Southern California. I made a mistake. I am sorry. Sheesh. No problem, buddy. I think Americans place an emphasis on heritage that Brits find strange, particularly as they seem to cherry pick the sexier cultures. Yeah, that's a thing. While we're on the subject, I know that I am English, Irish, Scottish, French, German, Swiss, and Cherokee. So there you go, Lenny. I'm a mutt. Mistaking the purpose and freedom of the NHS as evil society ruling socialism while bankrupting themselves. Yeah, no, okay, yeah. <sighs> this is getting sad. Having a kitchen door? What? Having a kitchen door. Being on time for world wars. <laughs> Dang, burn, cheers to that. <laughs> Britain almost was non-existent. Five, yeah, we were late. Sorry about that, y'all. Putting butter on every sandwich. Oh yeah, baby. Yeah. Having an MOT to make sure your car is safe to drive. I don't know what that is. Chocolate East Greggs. Had no idea this wasn't a worldwide thing. Oh, we have that. We have chocolate Easter eggs. All the Americans I have known have all thought it's odd we have a washing up bowl in the sink. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that is. Call Lego Lego and not Legos. That does my head in so much. Legos. Lack of electrical sockets in the bathroom is still jarring to me. Oh, this must be an American. The presence of them in a bathroom would be shocking to us. Saying our country is utter shite to everyone, but when someone not from the UK says it, we all go super patriotic and call you a wink. <laughs> I get it, man. It's like complaining about your grandma. I can do it, but you can't. I get it. According to my American best friend, calling a penis a willy. Tallywhacker. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if someone said willy, in the right context, I would know that they mean penis. Tallywhacker. Now that's a great word. Well, y'all, I think this has probably been enough for today. <laughs> thank y'all for watching this with- Oh, let me thank my patrons. Thank y'all. If you'd like to become a patron, uh, there's a 
uh, link in the description. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, thank y'all for watching this with me, and I'll see you tomorrow. Later.